this is a, a segment from the EU uh, report. Um, it, it says the widely welcomed Electoral Act 2022 uh, introduced measures aimed at building stakeholder trust. However, the Act's first test the general election revealed crucial gaps in terms of INEX accountability and transparency proved to be insufficiently elaborated and lacked clear provisions for timely and efficient uh, implementation. Weak points include a lack of INEC independent structures and capacities to enforce sanctions for electoral offenses and breaches of campaign finance rules. And so on and so on. then it says furthermore the presidential election of INEC leadership the the presidential selection of INEC leadership at the federal and state level leaves the electoral institution vulnerable to the per uh, perception of partiality and once i mean so the, the thing is <laughs> there are there are I'm, I'm, I'm so the, yeah so oh, the take <laughs> the take of some nigerians and as i said these are these are Oibo people straining to be polite, you know, because of course they don't want to say you Africans are baboons, you are monkeys, the way you, you did this thing, you are idiots, right? Which, trust me, in their private spaces, this is what they, they must be, la we're laughing stock, is what we are, right? So we waste, uh, every four years, we waste billions, okay, trying to do an election and ultimately what we do is uh is a sham exercise right um and 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 so these people are trying to be very very polite in their language but it's it comes true still that this was not an election this was not an election and this was a, a an election where the top leadership of INEC made all kinds of promises within Nigeria and outside of Nigeria that they were going to go by the rules, uh, the system was impregnable to manipulation and so on and so forth. And we got a fairly good system. It's just that we have a system that is not uh, proof against shamelessness, against just um daylight robbery which is what happened in case after case after case and so so you look at the problem that the european union highlighted that in a lot of polling boats party agents did not have access to the results right and then the results were not uploaded in the way that the electoral act stipulates that they should be and then a lot of the uh, parties then approach the electoral uh, tribunals, right, uh, for review of the results. And INEC is subpoenaed to produce documents. These are documents on the basis of which INEC announced the, so the ostensible results. And so INEC will come to court and make excuses. Oh, we brought two out of ten documents we are supposed to bring. Okay, the next day they'll say, oh yeah, you know, this party did not pay for the printing of the thing, so we didn't bring it. Okay, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So you see at every stage fraud, that fraud is writ large, because if you are confident in the elections that you are, yeah, that you announced, then you should have the documents. If anybody challenges you, you say, here, here are the documents, right? Um, and the documents should match what was, uh, what obtained at polling units all over the country on election day, you know. But obviously, uh, that is not the case. Well, you highlighted the, um, the issue of Nigerians. So for some Nigerians, you know, there is a zero sum game, right? And it's also, um, as I say, politics has few principles other than the principle of victory, to have the V or the W, the win. And so some people are just um, celebrating the fact that the candidate who is their, their uh, 
ethnic champion or they are uh, political, um, you know, who belongs to the a party of their political leaning, one, or somebody who uh, is of their religious persuasion, one. What these people don't understand, or maybe they understand, I don't know, because this should be a lesson that should be clear to us, every Nigerian by now, is that if you support electoral impunity, if you support fraud, if you support the um, uh, the the um, the stealing of elections, essentially what you're saying is that you have no investment in democracy, and uh, at some point you are going to be on the losing side. So if that is the way the game is played, at some point your candidate is going to win and your candidate will be rigged out. And trust me, I don't think there's anybody whose candidate is rigged out of a deserved victory who says, oh yeah, I applaud the person who stole my candidate's um, uh, mandate, right? Because that's the way elections are supposed to be, to be made. So that's one point. But the other point is that once we institute the ethos that elections can be stolen, then everything is up for grabs. Uh, young people will go into exams, not preparing for, for the exams. They will give bribes. Uh, they will get good grades based on the amount of money they have to bribe. Um, they're going to go to university. They're going to study medicine. They're going to bribe to become doctors. And they're, they're going to treat you. And even those of us who are outside of the country, they're going to treat your loved ones. So you're going to hear that somebody died uh, needlessly because they were treated by somebody who has embraced the idea that money should buy anything or that connection should buy anything, you see. And at any rate, when you have bad governance, it affects everybody. I don't think that there is an APC person who goes to the market and, you know, there's a certain price for, the, for fuel and you produce your APC card or you produce a cash and you're a Muslim or you're a Yoruba person and they say, oh, you know what, we're going to knock off 200 Naira from the price of fuel. No, every Nigerian ultimately suffers. But let's even assume that the person who is illicitly put in power becomes a genius of leadership, okay, begins to act in the public interest which is an argument that some people are using. Oh, not so far, Tinubu is doing well. The thing is that if Tinubu is doing well so far, let's even assume that. Let's, let's grant that for the sake of argument. You can't hold him to doing well uh, throughout his term in office, right? He could be doing well now because the case is in court. He doesn't know what will happen. He wants to sort of, uh, arouse a certain kind of public response and sentiment. Once he's then pronounced to be the legitimate president, then his true colors as a president, um, uh, emerges, right? But even if he continues to do well for four years, the point is still that the body politic, the moral fiber of the, of, of the, of, of the country is already poisoned. When you tell young people, when you tell every Nigerian that you can steal, uh, the most sacred and important political office in the country. If you can steal that, then you can steal anything, you know. So even if Tinubu goes ahead and becomes, Nigeria's Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Um, he, he will still remain a net, um, uh, um, adverse, um, factor in Nigerian politics. He doesn't do much that is positive for Nigeria, ultimately. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I mean, at the end of the day, he, I, you could beat you could beat that in so many ways, right? The main thing is to take a look at what is supposed to happen and what was supposed to happen, um, and that's the way 
a certain level of um, the word, a certain level of standards mm -hmm. in life is, is always needed. Doesn't matter where you are. Uh, that's the that's the natural evolution of humanity, and you would expect that the majority of humanity in this 2023 has evolved to have a certain level of standards. Um, it's not a question of making boastful. Um, you know, every group makes all kinds of claims about their lineage, most of which is nonsense. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Nigeria is no different from. European ethnic groups that all make all kinds of claims. Um, you can make all kinds of boastful claims that maybe you went to school, your group people went to whatever. This is all hocus pocus generally. But at the core, what you need is standards in life. So, and that's the main <laughs> thing. You need you you went you you want standards of some sort. What kind of country that you, do? Do you have a country? Did you have, do you, when you, what, how do you select your leaders? All those kind of things. So anyway, that's just the moral of the distance. If yeah. you, if you, if you don't, um, believe in standards and you believe mm -hmm. in the wild, wild west, mm -hmm. then, um, you know, let's have the wild, wild west. You know, everybody mm -hmm. should, should just yeah. get gone and let's chase ourselves around and see who wins. <laughs> right. So yeah, uh, and, I'm all and, for it. Yeah. <laughs> all, and I'm talking for about it. standards, right. Um, just talk about standards um which is um perhaps another way of talking about best practices right so elections were held in kenya last year um there were petitions for judicial review of the result of those elections those reviews, judicial reviews, were carried out uh, in a very transparent, in a very public, indeed in a televised format. Okay, same thing happened in Ghana. And so I was speaking to um, a political, uh, you know, a major Nigerian politician uh, a few days ago, and we were discussing the same question. And the question, the, the issue then became, why is it that in the case of Nigeria, in an election where so much was at stake, where the very, um, you know, Nigerians under, under Buhari, President Muhammad Buhari had come to a place of despair, both about democracy itself uh but also about the direction policy directions of the, of the of the country um with attacks that escalated sectarian attacks um with uh corruption on an unprecedented uh scale by in an administration that had staked out his claim to being um, to, to, to having, uh, excellent credentials, uh, in fighting corruption, um, uh, with just the exacerbation of violence on every scale, you know, by, um, the Islamic, um, uh, ISIS in West Africa, by Boko Haram, and so on and so forth, by Hertzmen. So Buhari had brought the Nigerian polity to, to a pass where for a lot of people, um, the 2023 elections had to do with the very question of, uh, whether Nigeria will continue to have a future as one corporate unit. That's what in a sense was at stake. So it was an election in which everybody needed to bring their best practices beginning with INEC, beginning with the security agencies, with the political parties and candidates and the way that they conducted themselves. 